morning all, welcome back to the channel. Going to be a bit of a different video today. Um, she's a nice day in Southam today. It's, yeah, it's supposed to turn to crap this afternoon, but it is currently not too bad. So we'll take that. So today we're going to be doing a bit of shedding out, which is <clears throat> taking the ewes that have had dead lambs, and also the ewes that haven't lambed yet, out of the paddocks with ewes and lambs. Just... Uh, the important feed is for the use of lamps. Um, also, we want to be able to manage the. I'm just going to turn into the sun a bit there. We want to be able to manage the ones um, that haven't lambed yet. We don't want to be going around the whole farm to do that. We've got tailing coming up, and we don't want young, young lambs, three, four days old in those mobs. So it's sort of the idea behind that. Um, and the ones that haven't got lambs that have, that have had dead lambs, some of them will get a second chance, and some of them will go to the freezing works. Some of them have already had their second chance. Um, some of them will have bad udders, can't make milk, can't feed lambs, that's no good, a few other things. So, anyway, we'll have a bit of a look at that. Um, there's been a lot of talk on social media and the news and stuff again about regenerative agriculture. And I just want to touch base on, on my sort of viewpoint on that and uh, why I think it can be a very, very dodgy, dangerous subject to talk about. And more so just steer your farm down that route. But uh, yeah, a few other things in here too. But, We'll make a start on the shitting out anyway. So over here, I can see she's got lambs, she's got lambs, she's got lambs, I'll get my finger out of the road. They've all got lambs over there, so uh, we don't need to go there. I need to find out where that little lambie's mum is, because that's a bit concerning. Um, yeah, there won't be too many in here, but there will be a wee few. They started lambing quite early on, and uh, yeah, that bad weather sort of took a wee few out, so there's, there's, there'll be a few, but there might not be very many. Alright, so we've got one in here, that second one right, right there, that uh, yeah, she thinks she's just the best thing out and she's not going to go where I want her to go, and at this stage there's an entirely likely chance that's going to happen, so she might get caught with a dog and days to come and put in a trailer and take her out of here, because uh, yeah, I'm going to try, I got her towards the gate, she didn't want to run to the mob of the other ones, but uh, see how that set of lambs there are quite young. So we've got to be a bit careful here, we don't want to go and upset a whole lot of stuff and miss my other lambs, so... Yeah, we'll see if she'll follow those ones back up the hill and get to my wee mob of uh, wet dries and... So far one late, but yeah, see she just wants to turn around and come back down the hill. Yeah. Well, that didn't go to plan. <laughs> there are three wet dries and there's one to lamb, which is actually bloody impressive. Got 140, 150 ewes in here, can't quite remember which. Um, that's not many, uh, but there's still one wet dry in here and the one to lamb is still in here. So, have another crack at that this afternoon, see if we can get her. Um, if not tomorrow or the next day or when we get there. Because um, I'm literally just shooting them out into, uh, where are we, that next paddock I did. That one yesterday, just into that one. So we're just sort of trying to shrink them down. Um, and eventually we'll get down to the yards and we'll get the, the wet dry separated from the inland ones. And the inland ones will have their own paddock or two. Um, and yeah, then there's only one or two paddocks to go around twice a day. To be fair, in good weather, once a day is perfectly fine in October. But uh, yeah, just lightens the load so we can go and get some tractor work done and some other stuff. But yeah, we'll get back to this this afternoon. We'll uh, go and have a crack at the next paddock. And what are you going to do? How are you going to get me? You're a bloody nice looking lamb, but I don't think you're going to get me. I don't think you're going to get me. Are you going to have a go? Are you going to have a go? Is that your mum over there? Because if that's your mum, this paddock has no wet dries, and that is amazing. And I suspect that may be your mum, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Look at that. This paddock has no wet dries. First year of planned earlies, and... Uh, I should have had them shedded out a long time ago, but I haven't bothered because they're all works use and if I shed them out I'm going to put them somewhere they're going to get mixed up with use that aren't work use, works use. So we're not going to get rid of them at the end of November and that's going to reduce, yeah it's going to mean we're going to have more on into January, which is more feed, um, so I thought they'd be fine to just lamb in here, uh, or stay in here until we get to the shedding out and we can have a sort up. Um, yeah, but that's amazing, there was only 35 views put in here admittedly. Um, 37, 38 maybe, um, and it was four and a half hectares, but uh, early or mid-August and the grass isn't growing, there wasn't a lot of grass in this paddock, so as you can see now there's plenty there, 
Right, that's an awesome result. We'll go into the next paddock. So I've already shedded out of three paddocks with you guys, and I haven't actually shown you what we're doing yet. So uh, here's all your gloves. So I'm just driving around, and we're looking for sheep that have no land. So that could be one there. That middle one, I'm not yeah, looking at behaviour, I'd say. So she hasn't landed yet. I'm going to try and get it to run back to the other side of the paddock. That's not our farm over there, by the way. Although, then you get that happening, you get confused. She's got a nice udder on her. Where's their mum? Where's their mum? There we go. She's crossed over. I suspect she actually might be. I'm not convinced yet. Still not convinced. I don't think she is, but I don't know where their mother is. So let's got these years with lambs all heading away. Just like this, they just sort of they just they don't want to be confined in a mob and they just want to separate themselves out. So just take the time to do it nice and easily. Sort of let them do most of the work for you. It might take a wee while, but uh, it's gotta be done. Just spin around here and see if anything's come off the other side. Once again, not our farm there. See there's one, there's another one, but then there's a wet dry that's going to try and go with them, so... The wet dry might just turn around a bit easier though. We'll see what happens here. Oop, 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 oop. Get your lambs girl, there we go, good girl. You can bugger off back out to the paddock. And be quite happy. Right, so we've got these two ewes here with four lambs and the rest of it dries. The problem is one of their lambs <laughs> is back up there. Here we go, turn the cameras off and have a go. There you go girl, there you go. Go away, we've got to go get her back. She's going crazy. Where's that girl gone? It's just this, it's one, two, three, four, five. Now, those two are going to be trouble. Got to get them to run through this brake fence up here. Come on, girl, keep going, keep going. Still got to go back and get your mates. Getting pretty puffed now, and this is sort of quite a dangerous thing to do because she's heavily in lamb, but she is crazy. You see, this one's going up the hill. She's got to go down because. Come on! You're a nutter. There we go, just stay on the fence line and you'll get through the fence. There we go, so there's the brake fence. Right, they're through to the next one, we'll go back and get the other two. Or three rather, and uh, there they go. Right, I'm going to go carry on shedding out the other side of this paddock, because might as well get it all done. And uh, I could keep showing you this, but it just goes on and on and on for hours. So, uh, yeah, we'll get this done and carry on to the next subject. So, I've been trying to do this chat for quite a wee while, this uh, regenerative chat, and it's been challenging. <laughs> Things keep changing. Um, so, Beef and Lamb have recently come out and announced that they, New Zealand Beef and Lamb, that they want to sort of go down this path and they want to try and brand what we are doing as regenerative. And uh, I've voiced my opinions on that. I've been talking to them. I'm quite concerned about the messaging that that sends. Now, I just want to start out by saying that I've got nothing against regenerative agriculture and it's true and pure form. I think it's a great system designed to essentially restore dust bowls and make them basically oases. And it does work. Um, but it doesn't fit what we're doing here. And that's not to say that it's better than us or that we're better than them. It just doesn't fit. So we're often told that regenerative agriculture has no definition and uh, I don't buy that for a second. If you Google the five key principles to regenerative agriculture you will find no soil disturbance, always having live roots, always having soil cover, always having a diverse range of plants in the ground and the reintroduction of livestock. So let's go through each one of those. So 
We'll start with no soil disturbance. It's quite simple really. If you're doing any form of cultivation at all, you're not regenerative. Now you'll find in some of the, the lesser readings on it that uh, it might mean less cultivation, less tillage. Um, not from what I've seen, it is no till. It is absolute no till. And it's no soil disturbance. And I would question whether grazing stock on paddocks over winter. If you follow the regenerative grazing setup, then yeah, maybe. But if we did that here over winter, we'd uh, get around the whole place in about the first month, and then we would have no quality feed left to feed our stock. So uh, that's not going to work. Look, even crop aside on grass, we disturb the soil over winter. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. In a lot of ways, it's a good thing. Uh, I'm not saying that not disturbing it will be a bad thing either, but it doesn't fit that bill. Um, then obviously we graze a lot of crops over winter. That's absolutely not regenerative. For starters, we plough. We cultivate. We then cultivate that back out into grass. So no way in hell can we claim regenerative in that, in that system. And no one else doing that same thing can. On that note though, well, I would ask. So Beth and Lamb have done this study, and I forget what the figures are. I think it's about 35 or 40% of people said they wanted regenerative produce. Okay, cool. Um, under our system, a really key part of going regenerative would be glyphosate. Now, I've got nothing against glyphosate. Um, we don't use bugger all of it here. We use it for planting a few trees and that's it. Um, if you ask those same people, do they want glyphosate free food? Do they want food from a farm that has no glyphosate usage? Would they also say yes? And then are you knocking two options out of the park with one stone? Second one, uh, always having live roots in the soil. Now this one, to be fair, we probably ticked the, the box pretty well. We have a paddock and pasture for, look, it varies a lot. On this farm, it's about 11 or 12 years. Some people are 6 or 7, some people are 50, 100 years even. Um, awesome, we'll tick that box. Uh, even when we plough to go to crop, have we got live roots in the soil? Well, the grass we plough isn't dead because we don't spray it. Um, and within a reasonably short amount of time, the sweet roots are away going, and there's always a wee few weeds and a bit of grass comes back too. So I would be pretty confident in saying that we can tick that box off. Always having soil cover. Nope. Anyone who cultivates, nope. Forget about it. No way in hell. A diverse range of plants. Now this one's a little bit interesting because, uh, yeah, we kind of do. We have ryegrass. We've always got a few other grasses come back. We've got two different types of clover. Probably both whites, but uh, some people put some reds in as well. Might be a bit of chicory plantain. But hey, after a few years, chicory plantain's gone. Um, get more grasses coming back. But that's not what they mean by a diverse range of species, is it? That's when they start talking about having all sorts of different plants that do all sorts of different things below the ground. That, we can't take. We can't do that. And then the reintroduction of livestock. Um, bringing livestock back to the land. I really struggle with this one. Uh, we're livestock farmers. We can't bring livestock back. We've, we've always farmed livestock and that's what we've done. That brings up another really great topic though. So the whole region thing, is, in my view, is designed around repairing soils, reinvigorating soils that have been depleted by decades and decades of cropping. Uh, sometimes in places that, that should never have happened, but I'm not criticising those people because I don't have their land. If I had their land, I'd probably have done the same thing. Um, so it's great that some people in those areas are doing something about it. And the ones that aren't, hey, maybe they don't have the need. But... Can we reintroduce livestock here? No. What does that mean? Look, to me, uh, it's pretty simple really. We don't have to reintroduce livestock. We've already got that here. So that's sort of my take on it. Um, I really think there's a lot of people out there claiming to be regen that absolutely aren't. It's a great word, this concept that we're regenerating the earth. Don't get me wrong, I get that. And I get the marketing side of it, but it is marketers that are pushing this. It is not farmers, very, very few farmers that are pushing this. And that really irks me because we're very concerned about losing trust with their consumer. Now, we're going to go out, they're going to try and brand us as regenerative. They're not going to ask us to change anything. They're just going to try and brand us as regenerative. And that, to me, is wrong. Our soil's here, and I'm speaking from a sheep farmer's point of view. It is probably the same for dairy, but I... Don't have any experience there, so I can't really speak to them, but I'm sure it is pretty similar. Um, they're some of the healthiest in the world. They are amazing soils. They are fertile. They are alive. Earthworm numbers are just huge. I'll go and dig some holes later and show you. Even in our crop paddocks, we've got lots of earthworms, even the ones I've just cultivated. It's amazing. Um, 
we don't have the need for this regen system. Now, I've been saying for a long time, we need to come up with something different. We need to come up with something and say that we're above regen. Now, I'm not trying to say that we're better than regen, but my view is that as soils here on this farm are what regen wants to achieve. So we don't need to do it. It's pretty bloody simple. Right, so here we are in a paddock of uh, using lambs, lambing away. Right, we've got one worm there already. Now this might look pretty ordinary, but this is a very old paddock. This paddock hasn't been ploughed for a hell of a long time. Look at the worms. There, there. Look at the roots coming down this deep. What are we there? Six, seven inches. There's my hand. There'll be six inches there. Let me go through here. Roots all the way through it. Looking pretty good. No, that's not a worm, but that's root mess. Organic matter, as you'd call it. Look at this layer of organic matter on top that we just can't break through. More worms. Look at all this, would you? More worms. I'm going to stop doing this because I don't like killing worms. This is all our yeah, layer of organic matter up here. The spade sort of smeared it a bit, but you get the idea. Breaks up quite easily down low. Nice friable soil, as they call it. It's quite wet at the moment. More worms. Um, but yeah, that layer there, not the grass on top, but the this, this root system here is holding this one here, holding everything together. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. And here we are in one of my crop paddocks. So this paddock has had so a little, little less than a year ago it was ploughed. Then it was pear harrowed. Then it was chain harrowed. Then it was sown out with a whole lot of fertilizer. Quite a lot of fertilizer I will grant in these crop paddocks. Uh, then it had some more nitrogen fertilizer put on in February, January. Uh, it's also had an insecticide, although it's a pretty selective insecticide that's only really targeting aphids. Um, it's had another application of a chemical called Versatil, uh, which takes out the thistles, although you can see the line. You can see here, this is all in subsoil, just out there, well, just out there. There's a green line, and that's where we left always stripped with no Versatil by the maize. Um, it's then been grazed, very, very heavy crop taken off it. And now it's been subsoiled, it's, we've gone through with more cultivation. Yes, I've just come and dug this up. Now worms are a sign of healthy soil, right? Soil is not massively compacted, although like I said it's been subsoiled. Look at that, look at those worms, loving that. And I'll put them back under there because I don't want them dying. We like our little worms. Here guys, we'll pop me back in the hole. There you go. When we look through here, there's just worms everywhere. Look, there, they're everywhere. Worms are a sign of healthy soil. Do we really need regen? Sorry, I'm going to stop this now because I feel like a criminal doing this. Put all these guys back down. Um, I would suggest we do not. Big chunk of organic matter. Ha <laughs> ha. That's from the bottom. That's what we buried. It's not gone. Still there. Organic matter in those swede butts. Lots of organic matter. My take on the whole thing is look, do what you're doing, farm how you want to farm, that's great, awesome. Sell what you're doing, but don't sell what you're doing by criticising everyone else. And if you're going to do that, make sure you've got the bloody science behind you, because we're all getting a bit bloody fed up with it. Everyone's got their own way of doing things, and it's pretty well known. The people that know what's best for the land are those bloody well working it. So uh, let us do our thing, you do your thing, we'll all get on, eh? Yeah, so anyway, that's a bit of a look at what we're doing here and the results that we're getting. Now, I don't doubt that, like I said to you before, I do suspect our soils are where region wants to get. What I've just shown you there, it's a pretty small look at it, but it gives you a pretty good idea. Um, just don't see the need for massive change. I mean, what we're doing is working and working really, really well. And as a matter of interest, um, we had a lot of rain yesterday, like, I think an inch and a half probably. We a lot. Um, yeah, the big thing with cultivation is sediment loss, right? There is the water running off my crop paddocks. Yeah, it's way, way up. Normally the creek's way down in there. It's currently flowing over there and here as well, but uh, I'd happily drink that. Right, so I got my bottle. A wee bit of condensation in it. I'm a bit more worried about what's in the bottle than I am in the creek, so I'll give it a wee rinse.
Beautiful.